my check my check welcome to the channel this is your boy trini for vlog tripping and we're gonna do part two of our top five things you should know before you book your flight to cuba cuba is not a destination you want to show up to unprepared all right you're gonna have to do your homework you're gonna have to do your preparations all right and your boy's gonna walk you through the next five things you need to know before booking your flight to cuba hit that like and subscribe let's go Mic check, mic check. Welcome to the channel. All right, guys, we're going to do part two of my top five from Cuba. Don't forget, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, support the channel so I can keep making these videos. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. All right. All right. So we're going to start with something that you probably already know. Cuba is a communist country. As an American citizen, you cannot stay at any government-owned nothing. Government-owned hotels, government-owned restaurants, you, you, you can't stay there. That, that ain't for you, all right? Um, there is a level of surveillance that you're going to have in Cuba, uh, meaning just to do simple transactions. You may want to see your passport. Like to use the Wi-Fi in the airport, you got to put in your passport number. I did it. Still wasn't... A, still wasn't able to use it all right also if you have visitors in your hotel or visitors in your airbnb local non-local everyone got to submit some type of id by picture and then your host sends that picture to the cuban government so they know everyone that enters your your domain i guess wherever you're staying so they keep a record and they keep track of that all right also even though you might see some abandoned buildings or what i would say failing structural architecture there's cameras on it so there is a big brother in cuba all right there's also going to be cuban police stationed at different places and they'll just be standing there all day and you'll definitely notice them more at night um it's not like a field of intimidation um they kind of they kind of just just watch like i didn't see any i didn't see any interactions with police with the locals um and they weren't staring at you uh they weren't coming off um trying to start a problem or anything like that it's kind of letting you be for the most part we had two interactions with police uh we had one on the beach where we had a, a bottle they told us to cover it up it was very respectful they didn't try to you know start anything they, they were cool you know they, they treated us fair the second time is when they pulled over our taxi driver who i don't think he's an official taxi and i guess he had to hit them off with something because he's not really supposed to be able to transport tourists so that was you know that's that that's what it was but the police didn't do anything to us they didn't try to extort us they didn't interrogate us they didn't they didn't bother us you know, I mean, they didn't give us no looks. It, it was it was cool. I felt safe in Cuba. Um, I felt safe, you know, walking by Cuban police. So I, it's safe to say that if you're not acting a fool, you'll be fine. All right, don't act a fool. You're you're a guest in a foreign country. Just chill. You're there for what you're there for. You know, don't don't bother the police. And it looks like the police not gonna bother you. All right. This one, this one's gonna hurt. This one actually is part of the reasons why I left a little bit early on my trip. The food, for the most part, is terrible. It's horrible. It's unseasoned. There's rarely any seasonings in most of these places. Um, that, like people that have seasoning and spices, they put it out in front on the counter. Like it's like a decoration to let you know if you come here, look, we actually have hot sauce. We actually have adobo. You know, basically, besides salt and pepper, that's what most places have. And also, ice is a delicacy. Some places do not have ice. So you might not even get a cold drink, all right, or be able to add ice to your drink, okay? Uh, the Cuban water, uh, let me see if I'm, it's called Ciego Montero. I'm going to try to put a picture up. Man, that water is disgusting. It tastes horrible. 
it really did i couldn't drink it um i think one of our people that traveled with us said they, they were able to drink it by putting some lemon water in it listen i had to seek out um exported foreign water it's called Burdani. i'm gonna try to put a picture up and i think it's it's from somewhere in europe i believe but that's the one that that actually tastes very close to american water I could actually drink it, right? Obviously, you don't want to drink out the faucet, okay? So that's a no-no, all right? Um, the meat, the beef, the chicken, the pork, sometimes is a little questionable. So sometimes, like, I don't know what type of quality chicken and beef this is. It is what it is. I noticed also that they only have one type of fish called the imperial. Like, we were there asking for salmon and asking for snapper kingfish i was like no we, we don't have that we never will have that i was like oh all right also if you like to eat dinner late well not really late but like around six five o'clock and you go to a restaurant chances are their menu is really limited if not everything's finished usually there's no chicken there's no beef there's no pork they might have some fish they might have some lobster it's it's limited so the later you try to eat the less likely they're gonna have what you want so you kind of kind of have to plan ahead of where you want to go to eat all right but overall the food is not the greatest it's cheap most of the places the food is very cheap but just keep in mind you're not going to get those instagram type pictures or these elaborate um type of spreads nah the food was still good though, but it just it just wasn't it's it's a little bit less than what you used to. Alright, don't don't be surprised. I did find one or two great restaurants. They're a little bit pricey, but you know, they had the seasonings, they they had the type of food, but it's still rare. Alright, that, that pizza that they got is it's just not pizza. Alright. <laughs> so and also there's also limited access to supermarkets so it looks like from what we saw is some type of rationing thing going on so there'll be like long lines at what looks like supermarkets but there was none that we found that we can go to that let's say we could buy you know we had to buy bottles of like let's say packs of water through our host right like this i didn't find where i could buy fruits i, I didn't even see a supermarket to be honest with you okay so just keep in mind you may not be able to go to the supermarket you may not be able to go to drug stores. I didn't. I didn't think I see any. So you got to bring a lot of stuff with you that you might want to use, because chances are you're not gonna be able to get it in Cuba. All right. Next thing is, and I think I alluded to this earlier, that because of limited Wi-Fi, you got to book your housing in advance. You could only stay in Casa Particulares. All right. So basically, that's like an Airbnb or Verbo. And there are Casa Particulares websites you can look up. Um, basically, your prices to stay in Cuba probably be from twenty to fifty dollars USD a night. All right. Um, they do have like some bed and breakfasts. Um, I don't have the links because I didn't do I didn't do any of those things. I use Airbnb. All right. Airbnb is kind of safe, but you have to book in advance because you may not have access to Airbnb website when you're in Cuba. All right, the app may work, right? So just keep that in mind. You gotta book these things. You can't stay in any government-owned hotels, all right? And because of your limited access to your cash, you know, you wanna set this up ahead of time because you don't wanna get there and have a situation where you don't have enough cash to cover where you wanna stay. And remember, your credit cards don't work and your debit cards don't work either, so you can't go to the ATMs, all right? Next thing is, don't plan to bring back a lot of cigars and rum all right it is not allowed all right we check the rules you cannot bring them back so when you get back on american soil and they ask you if you have these things and you declare them they're going to take it from you they are going to destroy it all right so in cuba they're going to try to sell you cigars they're going to try to sell you rum and all these fly stuff and chances are you, even if you bought it from the duty free they're gonna once you get to us they're gonna if they find it they're gonna take it now of course there's ways around anything so my friends will be able to bring cigars but it wasn't a large amount all right it wasn't like the up to 100 cigars and all that stuff and if you do get it in 
you know, if customs pull you aside and check your bags, they're going to take it. So just giving you a heads up on that, all right? All right, guys, this is something that I didn't grasp until my second day. You need to know the exchange rate. If you don't know the exchange rate, people are going to take advantage of you. They're going to beat you in the head and you're not going to know. <laughs> All right. So when we went in August 2023, the exchange rate was 160, the bank rate. That's the official rate. That's the rate that you're going to get at the airport. We don't recommend that you change too much money at the airport because you can get a better rate the closer you're into town, the closer you're into Havana. The Airbnb and host could probably hook you up. All that's good stuff. All right. The, the cab, the taxi is going to be 25, 30 USD and they all take USD. So you're still fine. You could you could roll with just paying for the cab and then exchanging your money as you get closer to your, your destination or to where you're staying. All right. So the exchange rate is 180 to 220 in the street. So everywhere you're walking, people are going to say cambio, change. They're going to be eager to change US dollars to pesos and you need it. Because if you don't have pesos and you want to use U.S. dollars, especially that something like a restaurant or, yeah, or buying stuff, they're going to automatically give you the bank rate, which is 160. We went to a club and they charged, they think it was like 15,000 pesos for, for bottle service or for a section or something. And we gave them the equivalent in USD and they said it wasn't enough. And we're like, what are you talking about? And we literally went, no lie to you, we literally stepped outside the club and had to get the change to then come back and give the person the, the conversion. Because in the club, they don't want to convert it for more than 160. But walk outside, literally right outside their doors, and we found someone that's going to give us change for, I think, 210. All right, so that's a big, that's like a gain of, what, 50 pesos? Mass of my math is right, <laughs> so it, it could be a huge difference. All right, so what it is, the locals they can then get 220 and higher for USD. All right, so check it out. Remember, bank rate 160 on the street, 180 to 220. Locals can get 220 or higher. So a local will basically change money all day and make a profit easily. All right. And another thing is, along with that, remember, you don't have access to American bank accounts. You don't have access to you don't have access to credit. You don't have access to debit. All right. You have you don't have access to ATMs as an American citizen. All right. And even if you do have access to ATMs, even if you're from Europe or Colombia or something, the ATMs run out of cash and there's lines for ATMs daily. So you still need to manage your money very well okay also you got to protect your money you don't want to walk outside with all your usd all right all the airbnbs and hotels have safes so probably for daily you want to walk around with i would say anywhere between 50 to 150 usd pesos equivalent you know just, just to keep you covered all right Yes, Cuba is cheap. You might spend three dollars on food, four dollars on food, fifteen dollars on food. Uh, I think we paid what one a dollar fifty for a bottle of water. Well, I was getting the foreign water, so things are relatively cheap. But when you're on in a, in a foreign country, you have to pay for everything. There, from what I can tell, there no there's no supermarkets, or the supermarkets are not for foreigners, so you can't actually go and buy like loaves of bread and a bunch of juice you can buy fruits off the street but like we try to buy a case of water it wasn't happening we got to buy everything you know individual you know out of cart so keep that in mind you're going to be spending pesos in cash a lot all right and because like i said you don't have access to your bank account every day you have to decide how much money you want to take out and you don't want to lose your money so listen get a fanny pack get a bag Get a man purse, put your money in your shoe, protect your money because honestly, there's no there's no one's coming to save you. You cannot receive money via Western Union. The embassy is not going to help you. All right. I try to change my ticket. I, I was trying to get my ticket changed for free. 
I told them I lost all my stuff. No, no, nobody cares. No one's going to help you. All right. The best thing you could probably do is maybe sell someone or PayPal someone that has like, like another foreign bank that they can get access to their ATM in Cuba. So don't put yourself in that position. Safeguard your money. Plan accordingly. I would say if you're going to bring $500, bring 1000 If you're going to bring 1000 bring 1500 You know, bring some in case, you know, it hits the fan type of money. Okay? So I would tell you guys, cash management, very important. Know the bank rate. Otherwise, they're going to rip you off. All right, guys. I'm coming to the end. Um, I'm probably left out some stuff, but... Yeah, man, don't try to bring in anything illegal. Don't try to do any illegal behavior. You you, you don't want to get caught up in the Cuban justice system. <laughs> you don't want to be stuck in a communist prison or be, you know, in some type of, uh, you know, handcuffs. <laughs> it's, it's not worth it. I know there's some stuff I forgot I'm trying to remember. Um... <laughs> Fellas, the women are beautiful. I think I showed some in the video. They are they are breathtaking. They're a breath of fresh air. They are untouched by a lot of uh, enhancements of any sort. It's basic. It's like I think glitter was the most most makeup I've seen on a person. Everything is all natural. Food is all natural. Um, it was a great trip. I'll, I'll definitely recommend it, but there is some pre-planning that you're going to have to do, all right? Besides that, guys, thank you again. Hit that like button for me. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. And hopefully I have some more videos for you soon, all right? I'm out.